My name is Linda Key Jackson. I'm proud to be the CEO of the Fragrance Foundation UK. We have entered the new era of conscious perfumery, where creativity and innovation combine the best of nature and science to lead the way for a sustainable future. So I am delighted to welcome Juliette Sico Crive, VP Business Development, Naturals and Sustainability Perfumery at Fermaniche, who will be sharing con conscious consumers' needs and aspirations for healthy, safe, eco-friendly and ethical fragrances and are leading to a fundamental reinvention of fragrance design. Thank you very, very much, um, Linda. Um, and hello to everyone. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be uh, here with you. And I want to thank you, Linda, and the Fragrance Foundation for giving me the opportunity to talk about this very, very important subject of um, conscious perfumery. Perfumery, like many other industries, is going through a major transformation transformation that is driven by two revolution standpoints. The first one is related to digital and artificial intelligence. And the second is sustainability. Both are opening new path for disruptive innovation, for exploring new possibilities and uh, olfactive possibilities as well. I am going today to focus on the latter and I'm going to share with you what is at stake. I am going to try to explain how this is requiring to fully reconsider uh, the way to design fragrances. And I'm going also to share with you how at Feminish we've decided to launch a completely new eco-design process that we call Create for Good and that we are uh, implementing with our clients and we are very happy to see that they are embracing this new way of working because it adds value. That's a nice way to uh, think about uh, conscious uh, perfumery. And um, let's, um, let's, let's start. Um, I wanted to do a parallel, a parallel between perfumery and, and fashion because the two have their roots in heart, in nature and, and in science. Through fragrance creation, we can uh, define who we are, what are our convictions, what is our identity. And today it is uh, quite uh, satisfactory to see that fashion, perfumery, as well as the beauty sector have fully embraced a much more sustainable and ethical approach, while at the same time keeping all the aesthetic, all the emotion and all the creativity. And I'd like to mention also the parallel between the designers uh, and the job of the perfumer. Um, actually, these two examples, you know, I, I'm sure you, you know them. Uh, the one is uh, from uh, Ricardo Tiski, and uh, he has fully, fully uh, put at the heart of what he does, uh, sustainability. Uh, it started, you know, with shows that were outdoors. And now, you know, you can see that the uh, new uh, autumn collection in men is going to be carbon neutral. He's doing everything he can also to make sure that all the shows you know, have a limited and reduced environmental impact. So it's connecting to nature, but at the same time, preserving nature. The other example is also very, very uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, when you see this young lady uh, whose name is Priya Alu Aluwalia, she has won many uh, awards in design for what she does. And the latest one is the uh, Queen Elizabeth II uh, Design uh, Award for British Design. And uh, she is actually taking dead stock or repurposed vintage in order to do garments that are aligned with her Nigerian and her um, Indian roots. Uh, this is just the example of uh, the fact that we can continue to be very, very creative uh, to provide very, very pleasurable experience in fashion and in fragrances, uh, and at the same time, you know, being sustainable. So I, I just wanted to really outline that this is, you know, absolutely crucial. When we look at conscious perfumery, the first thing is this is really something that is driven by 
the consumers. They are the one in the driving seat. They are the one wanting authenticity, safety, uh, ethics, and uh, to act responsibly. And you know that as a consumer, because this is the way we are all evolving in our day-to-day -day habits. The consumer that we call conscious wants brands and products that are healthier, that are safer, that are more ethical, and at the same time, more respectful of the planet. That's why they prompt the companies and the brands that we write the rules ahead of the traditional business values. And this is what we've called the conscious consumption era, which is also leading us to think that we are entering the conscious perfumery era. The first challenge in this uh, new consumption uh, ways is to really understand uh, what the consumer think, what do they understand, what do they want, are they satisfied with what they find today in terms of products, in terms of uh, information. And um, this is why we have started to really make a deep dive uh, into understanding the complexity of the consumer towards you know, this uh, very, very broad uh, topic uh, with a big study that uh, we've conducted uh, globally in the four regions uh, that are Europe with France in the US, in Brazil, uh, and also in, in China in order really to understand uh, where, 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 where uh, the consumer is. It is very important to say that we've done this uh, research in partnership with our colleagues from a taste uh, division, because we were con convinced that in this sustainability and natural uh, scope, the consumer is really paying attention first on the food and the drinks that she or he buys and after transpose all of that to the perfumery or the beauty sector. And actually, uh, one of the first figures that I like to quote and share with you is the one you see here, 70% of the people that we have surveyed, in total it's 500, uh, 5,000 people that uh, we could interview, they all told us that um, natural and sustainability is a critical value for making a decision in buying a fragrance. And we were quite surprised when we did that study, which was in 2019, to see a number being so high. And what was also very interesting is to uh, define that attributes alongside authenticity, self-expression, were actually attributes that were becoming higher in terms of importance than the traditional ones of seduction, of femininity, and it was especially important for the Gen Z generation. So this is actually uh, showing that things are really changing. We didn't stop listening to the consumers because this is a, a constantly evolving subject. Uh, and actually the uh, COVID uh, that we have been into uh, for more than a year now uh, has continued to be a very important uh, moment to understand how the consumer was evolving with the subject. The first thing that uh, happened so in during the lockdown uh, where we have uh, you know frequently uh, interviewed consumers uh, in, in, in more than 10 countries around the world including you know in the UK it's during the lockdown, the uh, downside is many of the shops were closed and people couldn't buy you know, fragrances as uh, freely as it was the case before. But the importance you know, of fragrance has a reason because uh, there is 56% of the global population uh, that we have interviewed during that time that say that they were appreciating fragrances more than before. Um, it probably means that um, it brings them, you know, into their comfort values. It connected them with uh, the nature. It connected them also with oneself and the, round, the world around themselves while they were actually in lockdown. And um, interestingly, because of the COVID having one of its symptoms being anosmia, 
uh, it also helps in a way, and that's the irony, to make people realize how smell is a very, very indispensable sense that we have and that we don't really want to lose. At the same time, what is interesting, and we've seen that repeatedly in uh, all the countries, and uh, we've seen it for fine fragrances and also for consumer uh, fragrances and, and products, is since this COVID, people are really saying how important it is for them to have natural, natural products. If we look at um, today, more figures, uh, but because this is uh, absolutely important. Um, what the consumer plays back uh, today shows really that it's not easy to be a conscious consumer. It's in no way simple and uh, it's not fully satisfactory at the same time. Um, why that? Because there are a lot of contradictions. They are not of misunderstanding. Um, there is a lot of, you know, tensions. Uh, let's start with the fact that, as we said also, people want to have uh, fragrances in their life. They are 96% of the consumers that really say that they don't see themselves living without fragrances for the sensoriality and the pleasure it brings to them. At the same time, uh, almost two thirds of them said that they were quite unsure on uh, actually the, the impact of fragrances on their health and the planet resources. And also then we also had only 20% of the people that told us that they thought they were well informed about the composition of a fragrance. And if we add this, the fact that conceptually people are really declaring that they want natural fragrances uh, but when we look at actually fragrances that are highly natural, uh, when they smell them, the reaction that they have is usually that this is not completely in line with, with what they want to have. What they like the most uh, are, are very, very light fragrances, very gourmand notes, and actually the natural fragrances are very, much more likely to be uh, very, very floral, very, very spicy or very aromatic. So uh, there is a, a disconnect here. So the idea of the conscious perfumery, and actually this is a great opportunity, is to alleviate these tensions, to make sure that we can reconcile all of these uh, components of the conscious perfumery in order to make sure that the consumer has a very, very smooth, delightful experience uh, without having any doubt and any, any, any more questions. That's what we call, and you've heard me say, the conscious perfumery era. And this is really a very, very important turning point in the history of perfumery. Uh, for those that who have followed the history of perfumery, there have been, you know, um, big, big uh, era. The first one that uh, started in the antiquity and that lasted until uh, the end of the 19th, 19th century has been you know, primarily uh, built on natural fragrances, natural essence, balsam, and, and, and this kind of stuff. Until the opening of what has been called the modern perfumery that started really at, at the very end of the 19th century and has been into the entire 20th century. Um, the modern perfumery corresponds to um, the uh, launch of very, very important synthetic ingredients uh, like, uh, for example, uh, the Fougère Accord, like uh, Comarine, like Calonne, or like Edion. And they have enabled to have a, a perfumery that has become much more faceted, much more complex, and in a way also performance, and uh, has allowed you know, a lot of gourmand notes um, that um, have uh, been at the end of uh, the 20th century. And all of these uh, modern perfumery are things that our nose have been uh, starting to be addicted to. Today, we think that we are really not talking at all about traditional perfumery or modern perfumery. We think that it's not about nature. It's not about opposing nature to synthetic. 
it's about opening a brand new way of designing fragrances that we call perfumery. The one that is going to be able to combine the best of nature and the best of science in order to deliver delightful and sensorial fragrances. This will always be the primary uh, mission of, of a fragrance, but at the same time, make sure that it builds the trust uh, with the consumer and also prove to be respectful to the planet and its people. So what is conscious perfumery? Sustainability and conscious sustainability is at the heart of conscious perfumery and sustainability has to be seen as, as, as a journey. Um, it's about really thinking long-term. It's about exploring territories and avenues that had not been done before. It's about making decisions. It's about making choices, bold ones, and, and commitments that are really, really bold, that sometimes we don't even know how we are going to be able to uh, meet you know, these commitments. Like also to say that sustainability is not singular. It is multifaceted. It requires to take into account a multitude of complex and sometimes uh, difficult uh, and technical dimensions. The first, and this is probably the most obvious for all of us and for the consumers at the same time, it's the fact that it's about the ingredients, the ingredients that are in the products and the ingredients that are also in the fragrance. It's about making sure that these ingredients are more and more uh, not issued from petrochemicals, but on the other end are you know, renewable, have the possibility to be coming from uh, biomass at the beginning that are able to rejuvenate themselves so that we are not going to deplete you know, the resources. And of course, at the same time, making sure that we bring to the market um, ingredients that are very safe for a human being, that is also safe for um, all the aquatic uh, zones. And in here, it's also about renewable, biodegradable ingredients. And this is the first thing that uh, we take into account when we talk about conscious perfumery. But it is also about these ingredients, how are they, uh, how, where they are coming from? Uh, what is their origin? Uh, which is quite easy uh, to know when it's natural that we want to understand where uh, it's coming from. It's also about um, how the people um, that have been uh, involved into uh, the sourcing of uh, these ingredients have been treated. It's about also how this ingredient has been processed and has been extracted. And this is uh, very, very important to know. If you think that in a fragrance, you can have easily 100 or 150 different ingredients, you can already imagine how uh, busy you are to be able to collect all the information on these first two pillars that have uh, explained. But uh, that doesn't stop at the ingredient level. Uh, it's also about what is the impact that the ingredients that you have in your uh, fragrance have. This is about the, having a life cycle analysis of your fragrances. And for uh, also the client that we work with, this also applies to the rest of the formulation that they have in order to make sure that you minimize the carbon impact that you have on the planet. And in the end, this is you know, really the fourth pillar, it is making sure that you use all of these uh, ingredients uh, in creation in order to uh, deliver this very, very delightful and very sensorial and performing fragrance. And you find the way, you find uh, the language that is also going to explain to the consumer uh, what is inside in order to gain uh, her or his trust. This is all of this uh, that we have taken as an ambition. We want to excel in all of these dimensions. And this is you know, why we say that today, we'd like to push the limits and making sure that we can be uh, the best in all of these dimensions in the ambition that we are declaring for uh, the decade to come and that we want to complete by 2030. 
And as such, we really encourage the entire industry to move uh, in the same direction on all of these aspects. So now, um, how does it work concretely? Um, if you have a brand, if you're working on the brand, or if you're a perfumer, uh, you're probably uh, asking, okay, what should I do? Where to start? Um, the advice um, and the way you know, we, uh, we, we offer it in our uh, Create for Good process is always to start with the brand and the consumer. Um, because the consumer are asking the brands to have a purpose to uh, explain you know, why they should be chosen ahead of the other ones and, and why. And um, we, we know how important the fragrance you know, is as a contributor to explain uh, what the brand purpose is and to deliver on the brand purpose. These are notions of naturalness. These are notions of sustainability. That can be for the environment, it can be for people, it can be in terms of uh, uh, ethics. And this is very, very important to really, really uh, look at the DNA of the brand, uh, to look at the purpose that the brands you know, can carry and make sure that we can define the fragrance strategy that is going to be the most aligned uh, to this brand purpose. Uh, being relevant, being credible, and also, you know, being, you know, ambitious. You will probably imagine that if you are a fragrance designer brand that have a long stand in a market, you will not have the same conscious perfumery strategy than if you are an indie brand that just, you know, came to the market six months ago. And we need to make sure that each brand has its own way to express uh, its conscious perfumery strategy. Once you are in, you, you know where you stand for, where you want to go, where you have the permission to go uh, to really hone a very, very uh, uh, promising uh, brand purpose. This is about taking a stand this is about delivering on this uh, mission that you have put to yourself uh, as a brand. And this is about actually we story proofing. We've talked for a long time about you know, the brand and their storytelling. Today, the world of the conscious perfumery is about the story, but it's also how you prove the story. And um, this is where there are a lot of um, position and commitment that are being taken and they are taken by claims. And the claims are the way to share this contract with the consumer and being able to deliver on this contract. What we've seen in um, the way the consumer, you know, want to, you know, make a decision on whether I'm going to trust that brand, whether I'm going to buy the product, product, uh, we have uh, studied uh, at length uh, these dimensions because this is really complex. But in order to give you uh, some advices, uh, the, you know, the way the consumer uh, logic works is in four dimensions uh, that are coming you know, more or less in, in sequence. The first dimension in order to really uh, capture uh, the um, consumer is to talk about the naturalness that is at the heart of the perfume. That doesn't mean that you need to be 100% natural, but you need to hook the consumer with the part that is natural into, into the product. And this is also why we see a proliferation of a natural offering. Then it is also at the same time to explain why this is safe and going to keep me well. And then you need also to have a layer of uh, claims and the uh, story proofing about the fact that this brand and this product is doing things which are good for the planet and for its people. And uh, when we look at um, all the different claims, um, the really the other advice would be to, be, to continue to be very simple and, and intuitive uh, for, for the consumer. What we see is that uh, when we talk about a fragrance that is of natural origin, 
the uh, combination of these three words is really working super well in, in, in all the different markets, actually, uh, not only in Europe, but everywhere. And it is actually even better than if you have only natural fragrance. Um, when we talk also about um, uh, what's happening for the planet and the people, uh, keep the wording you know, very, very um, simple. Uh, this is also where we are trying also to make sure that the vocabulary that is used in, um, in, in the food sector, we see that you know, it's also something that the consumer, that resonates with the consumer when we are talking you know, into, into fragrances. Um, all of these, generally speaking, are also forming uh, a concept, which uh, I'm sure you've, you've heard, uh, which is the demand for clean fragrances. The clean fragrances, and I'm quoting here information from um, a study we've done in the, in the UK, uh, clean fragrance and a clean beauty uh, is something which is very appealing because the clean world word, even though this is not a, a definition, this is not regulated, but it captures a lot of these um, desires, expectations from the consumer. It uh, would be a clean fragrance will be more natural than a startup fragrance, it would be more innovative, it would be better for the planet, and it would be more ethical. So um, that's why we see uh, the rise of a clean fragrance in the marketplace and also in the, in the request of our, of our clients. Once you know the, um, the brand purpose and you've defined what are going to be the claims that are going to demonstrate how you deliver, uh, this is where for us and for our perfumers, uh, we need to be equipped with the right palette of ingredients. And the conscious perfumery is actually, uh, and, you know, is actually uh, putting a, a challenge to make sure that we are going to have a, a palette which is being equipped with enough of all the different ingredient types and the ingredient qualities in order to uh, deliver on the many, many different combinations of claims the many different combinations of fragrance strategy that are needed in order to be able to um, uh, have a solution, a tailor-made solution for the many different brands that we have in the market. So in a nutshell, there are two big types of um, ingredients that uh, we look at in, in, in the palette. The first um, uh, is about uh, related to the naturality that I mentioned. It's about natural products that are going to be beautiful from an olfactive standpoint and that are going to be sourced uh, in a very responsible way, responsible for the environment and also for the people uh, that have been you know, working uh, on this ingredient and the communities that are also depending from these uh, crops and sourcing. Um, we, are, we are having you know, a, a, a huge program uh, it is, you know, spread all over the world because we are sourcing ingredients in more than 43 countries. We are working with more than 100 of, uh, of producers. Uh, we are having, you know, a very, very uh, special uh, advanced program with also a selection of these uh, partners in order to define, you know, more uh, ways to be sustainable, to be you know, advancing uh, everything in the domain of sustainability. This program is called Natural, Nat Naturals Together because it takes a lot of people in order to be able to make that happen. The natural value chain is very, very long. There are many different actors and it is very, very complex. But it is you know, uh, what it takes in order to deliver the best naturals uh, for the consumers in a way which is absolutely uh, responsible for the environment to not to deplete the planet and for the people that are living from these uh, crops. And the other is about innovative and sustainable ingredients. In these categories of ingredients, you have actually many different kinds. You can have renewable ingredients, and uh, we, we mentioned that, uh, uh, I mentioned that earlier, making sure that you limit your dependence from petrochemicals and you rely on ingredients that are going to be renewable, meaning that the biomass is able to rejuvenate itself. Uh, this is also a very important priority for Firminish 
to um, not only have today uh, the vast majority and be a leader in renewable ingredients, but what we want in the future is we want to convert current synthetic ingredients into renewable uh, qualities. It's also about biodegradable uh, ingredients. Um, and um, it's also about uh, biotechnology. So there are very different ways in order to have the broadest and the best palette so that the perfumer is going to be uh, able to tap into it. I wanted to give you an example of an innovation that uh, is going to come uh, in naturals. We think a lot about where we source these ingredients when it comes to naturals. What is also important is to look at the way you extract uh, from these naturals in a way that is going to be sustainable. And uh, we are working very hard. We want to launch it uh, very, very soon in 2021. Uh, a new extraction process that doesn't use any solvent. So it's very clean. Uh, it also uh, uses four to five times less energy than a, a normal process. So in that sense, it is also very sustainable. And uh, on top of this, uh, this uh, new extraction process is going to really open very, very interesting olfactive possibilities. We will be able to extract from flowers, from fruits, or uh, from also vegetables that today are called mute because you cannot really extract from them today. Uh, one example is uh, probably lily of the valley. You know that today there is no way to get a natural lily of the valley. It is a synthetic ingredient, but actually with this extraction method, we will be able to have a natural lily of the valley. As you could see um, at the heart of conscious perfumery, there is a big, big, big challenge of innovation. And the idea, as I said, is really to make sure that we lead in naturality enhanced by the innovation. And at the same time, it is how to make sure that the science is going to be inspired by nature. I would like to, um, to share with you an example on what we do here, because this is also a very, very important uh, focus of all our you know, teams, our scientists, together with the teams that are working on natural sourcing. Uh, we want to make sure that here we push the boundaries to develop the best um, ingredient possible. We know the consumers want natural. We know that when they smell natural, they are not necessarily very happy or very satisfied. We also know that the planet has boundaries and uh, we cannot uh, you know, uh, think of you know, using and we need to spare the uh, natural resources. So this is where we have this innovation program in place in order to really, really uh, spare uh, the nature and leverage the science in the cleanest way possible. Let me give you two examples. The first one is talking about leading in science inspired by nature. Um, I mentioned to you renewable. Um, I mentioned, you know, you know also that um, Musk is a fam olfactive family that is very, very well liked by consumers uh, for the comfort uh, that it provides, uh, for the softness of what it provides. You know that musk originally came from animals, so in an intention to be cruelty free and legally it is you know, uh, impossible today to get natural musk and this is a very good thing. So all the masks that we smell and that have our you know, fragrances today, they are actually synthetic masks most of the time. What Firmenich has done, combining how important it is to have masks for the consumer and the uh, belief in renewability, we have developed you know, a renewable mask. So the idea is to make sure we can uh, uh, continue to enjoy uh, the mask, but in a way that is uh, completely renewable and that is not going to be synthetic. Uh, the name of this ingredient is romandolide, and this is you know, an ingredient from Flaminish that we are sure is going to have a lot of, a, of a, um, possibilities in the future. Another example of leading in naturality enhanced by innovation is Dreamwood. It's an ingredient that is coming from White Biotech. 
Actually, Dreamwood is a sandalwood note uh, that we just launched last year. The particularity of this ingredient is to be the expression of the olfactive note of Indian sandalwood. Indian sandalwood today is almost extinguished and the price of the natural uh, Indian sandalwood is uh, unaffordable for perfumers who are very, very sad. They have an alternative that is Australian sandalwood, but it doesn't smell exactly the same. Today, Dreamwood and the Y biotechnology enables to start with a natural biomass that is sugarcane, which is widely available, which is you know, also very cheap in terms of price, to which we apply a process of biofermentation. And with that, you, know, you are able to have, in the end, an ingredient which is 100% natural, 100% renewable and biodegradable, and that smells exactly like the Indian uh, sandalwood uh, from the beginning. So you can imagine how great it is for our perfumers to be able to have these new key uh, ingredients in their palette for uh, the future of their creation. We've talked a lot about the ingredients and beyond the ingredients, there is the notion of the measure of the impact of these ingredients, which, uh, and today in our uh, new eco-design process, it has been very, very key to capture not only what are the ingredients, make sure we have the best ingredient from a sustainable standpoint, but also be uh, able to measure the impact. So the, uh, you, you are uh, seeing in the market more and more uh, brands that are advanced and that are providing a measure of what is the impact of their products. It's happening in different categories, in apparel here uh, with this sports brand uh, called Decathlon. Uh, lately, uh, L'Oréal actually with Ultra Do brand has provided also a measure of the environmental score of this uh, shampoo. And that's part of their commitment in their uh, sustainability uh, journey. With Ecosen Compass, that is our tool, we can provide with uh, you know, numerous KPIs that are all you know, following uh, international guidelines that are all science-based. And this is where we provide what is the green properties of the fragrance. And these are the notions that are uh, depending on the nature and the type of ingredients. And these are things like renewability, biodegradability. But on top of that, we also provide the environmental impact of that fragrance. So what would be uh, the carbon emission related to producing that fragrance? What is the water footprint also? And we also provide a third score, which is the social impact. How the people that have been uh, involved into uh, this uh, fragrance, uh, whether it's our employees, the, supply, the employees of our suppliers to whom we buy uh, some of our ingredients, but also the local communities when we have naturals into our fragrances, all of that you know, is captured into scores that we have put um, into color coding uh, to ease uh, the uh, understanding. And the beauty is today, this is a reality. Our perfumers do have the Ecosen Compass in real time in their creation station, which means that they can on the spot see what is uh, the score and they can also uh, find alternatives in ingredients to change it. So all in all, I've um, talked about um, conscious perfumery uh, very quickly. It's a, it's a huge topic. Uh, it's a very, very challenging one. At the same time, it's you know, uh, absolutely key. Uh, that's why you know, uh, it requires to be very, very bold. And at the same time, you know, we all know that um, it's about you know, doing good. Uh, being you know uh, uh, generous to everyone the consumer the planet and all the pe people i hope that uh, you, you've understood that um, it's really important for all of us in the uh, in the industry to embrace this change the way we uh, recommend to embrace it is really to start with the brand and the brand purpose define uh, what are the claims that would be the most suited to uh, this brand so that after the creation can be really done in optimum condition, 
picking up the right ingredients, uh, picking it to a, a palette of very, very innovative and breakthrough ingredients, making sure that at the same time you measure that you have the impact that you want, which is positive on the planet and on people. And uh, last but not least, uh, ensuring that you earn the trust of the consumer by explaining transparently and uh, in words that resonate uh, what is in this uh, conscious fragrance. In conclusion, what I'd like to say, it's, it's very, very satisfying for, uh, for me, for the teams that are working on it, and I'm sure for you and for all the teams that are seeing that each fragrance which is now launched into the market is actually having a sustainable profile. And each launch you know, is uh, actually pushing uh, the limits in, uh, in, in what is happening. And this is really showing that things are in motion. Um, and it's not only on, on the fragrance, but it's also on the packaging because the consumer really wants to see that as a whole. Uh, but this is you know, uh, the way that we are going to make progress step-by-step step on a very, very big uh, agenda that we have. Thank you.